So we had a great moment. You know, we don't prosecute war criminals. Barack Obama said we tortured some folks and then no one gets prosecuted. And then we check, uh, we choke out uh, a guy selling selfies or Lucy's on the street in New York City and nothing happens, right? So we prosecute the smallest of crimes with the harshest of penalties. If you're selling Lucy cigarettes, we'll choke you out and kill you in broad daylight. But if you commit war crimes... <laughs> Ah, we tortured some folks. What are you going to do? So nobody went to jail in the Bush administration in any of the Bush administrations um, for the war crimes that they committed. One of the guys was this guy, Elliot Abrams. Right now, this guy was I remember as a kid, I used to see this guy on TV defending all kinds of illegal stuff in the Reagan administration. And here he is. He's a horrible person. And he gets called out by Keith Ellison's replacement in Congress from Minnesota's 5th District. Uh, Ilhan Omar, she actually confronts him about all the horrible stuff he's done in his life. And now, of course, Donald Trump is rounding up the, the, the deplorables. The, he, he went to the swamp, drained it, and found his the new cabinet there. And he's one of them. Uh, so he's a swamp creature. He's a war criminal and covers up for where well, he's the worst of the worst. Lies to Congress. He's been convicted. He's a horrible person. If there was any ju justice in the world, this guy would be sitting in a cell somewhere, okay? But there isn't, right? Because he's white and he committed all his atrocities at the behest of the establishment. So there's never a price to pay, right? So like, what did he do? Okay, well, this is from an article in Splinter. Uh, it says, sorry, your friend is a war criminal. What did he do? Well, Abrams, in his role as Assistant Secretary of State in the Reagan administration, played a crucial role in propping up dictators in El Salvador. Uh, by the way, the reason why we're talking about this is there's a video of, uh, I'm going to show you right after I tell you who this guy is, of her smacking him down. And that's the whole point of this. Because nobody ever gets held accountable. She's a congressperson. She holds him accountable publicly. And it was great to watch. I just want to tell you who he is before I show you the video. So... Abrams, in his role as Assistant Secretary of State in the Reagan administration, played a crucial role in propping up dictators in El Salvador and Guatemala, as well as the Contra death squads in Nicaragua, all, all in the interest of staving off left-wing movements and presumed Soviet influence in those countries. So whenever a government in South America, Central America, and Latin America, whenever they uh, actually form a government that's going to actually help the people, uh, the United States comes in and overthrows that. They uh, they arm, train, fund uh, death squads like they did in Nicaragua to go in and kill people or try to overthrow those governments. Uh, same thing they did in El El Guatemala, El Salvador. And it's all because, oh, my God, the, the le they, they say, oh, if you're a socialist or if you're lefty, you're associated with the Soviet Union. So they wanted to kill you. And so they would just install a corporatist right-wing government that was also way worse and impressive. Abrams once said that the brutal Guatemalan dictator Efrain Rios Montt, was con who was convicted of crimes against humanity and genocide, Abrams, Elliot Abrams said that that guy had brought considerable progress on human rights. The guy who convicted of a genocide, Elliot Abrams said that guy, oh, he's great on human rights. Abrams also tomato, helped... Tomato, tomato, you know. Tomato, so, tomato. That's all how you look at it. That's right, right. Abrams also helped perpetuate the cover-up of the 1981 El Mozote massacre by the U.S.-trained Salvadorian soldiers, telling a Senate panel that the reports of the massacre were not credible. So that he's lying to cover up a massacre. They killed two-year-old kids in that massacre. Abrams also played an, integr an integral role in the Iran-Contra affair, and he pleaded guilty to two counts of withholding information from Congress, a crime with obscenely low punishment, considering the things he'd done, but, but one for which he was later pardoned by George Herbert. So if you, again, they say Trump is the horrible guy because he pardons a pile. George Herbert Walker Bush pardoned this guy. This guy's a creep. Center for American Progress. Vi oh, okay. We're I'll, I'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. So here, so here's this. So let us get to I it. So here she is. Here she is. This, and she goes right at this. Was you don't ever see this because you're not allowed to bring any of that stuff up because it's impolite, and that's how Washington runs. You never confront people with the war crimes or the horrible things or the horrible effects of any of the things that they do. You're not supposed to do that. You're all supposed to be buddies. You're supposed to be able to, uh, uh, when a guy cuts um, benefits to poor people, 
and screws over workers. You're supposed to go, hey, let's go play softball and drink and forget about what you do with your laws. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> so she isn't either. And let's watch. Mr. Adams, in 1991, you pleaded guilty to two counts of withholding information from Congress regarding your involvement in the Iran Kortra affair, for which you were later pardoned by President George H.W. Bush. I fail to understand uh, why members of this committee or the American people should find any testimony that you give uh, today to be truthful. Oh, she's starting out strong. I like it. <laughs> she's I like out. it already. Killer opener. Kill she's starting out strong. Oh, by the way, last time you were here, you, you're a big liar. You're convicted. Why should we believe anything you say? And wa watch this. If I can respond to that. No. Uh, um, it wasn't a question. Uh, I, On was February, that was it not, was that was attack, not a question. That was the I... Put I reserve the right I'm to my time. It is not. It is not right. That was Members not a question. Members of this committee can attack on February eighth, who is not permitted to reply. That that was not a question. Thank you for your participation. On February eighth, nineteen eighty. Thank you for your participation. <laughs> you mean the war criminal just got his feelings hurt? Yes. Because she's pointing out facts. Yes, she's pointing out facts. She pointed out a fact that he was convicted. And uh, and it's got to hurt extra hard for a guy like him, you know, a guy who spent his life uh, organizing death squads to kill brown people to get t a dressing down from a brown person like that publicly. It's got to drive him nuts. Got to drive that guy nuts, right? I just like how he kept using the word attack. Yeah. Why well, you can't attack like, me. You can't attack. You can't. Only I can attack oh, oh, people yeah. overseas. You're attacking me with those words. Who? You testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee about U.S. policy in El Salvador. In that hearing, you dismissed as communist propaganda report about the massacre of El Mosote, in which more than 800 civilians, including children as young as two years old, were brutally murdered by U.S. trained troops. Doing that massacre, some of those troops bragged about raping a 12-year-old girl before they killed them. Girls before they killed them. You later said that the U.S. policy in El Salvador was a fabulous achievement. Yes or no, do you still think so? From the day that President Duarte was elected in a free election, to this day, El Salvador has been a democracy. That's a fabulous achievement. Yes or no, do you think that massacre was a fabulous achievement that happened under our watch? That is a ridiculous question, and I yes will not or no? It. No. I, I will sorry, Mr. I will take that as a yes. I am not going to <laughs> I will take that as a yes. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. This is the oh, just, this is all we get, by the way. He's never gonna he's never gonna go to. He just get pardoned. Trump will just pardon him. They just get pardoned for any crimes they commit. They can be criminals, but you can't be a criminal if if you're gonna do anything that's not like a war crime or a huge like if you're gonna like uh, you know try to get medicine for a sick kid. You're gonna get you're gonna get put in jail. Yeah, you lose your job for that. Yeah, you lose your job for that. But this there's never a price to pay. Uh, this is awesome. Respond to that kind of personal attack, which is not a question. Yes or no, would you support an armed faction within Venezuela that engages in war crimes, crimes against humanity or genocide, if you believe they were serving U.S. interest, as you did in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Nicaragua? I am not going to respond to that question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why aren't you going to respond to that question? Uh, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if she would just... I wish I could just be sitting next to her going, ha, 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 
Wouldn't it be? They need a guy there going, ha ha. That's the. That's why I think I love comedy so much because you can't. Because laughter is an involuntary thing, and it's just when you do. Ah, oh, can't deny. They need a laughter there. If they had, if they had an audience there, like those people should be laughing, right? Wouldn't that be great? I. I would like to think at least some of them. Some want to. of them. He's like, I'm not going to answer that. She's asking me if I would support uh, support an attack in Venezuela, yeah. and it's Valentine's Day, and how else am I going to come? I'm not answering this. I don't think this entire line of questioning is meant to be real questions, and so I will not reply. Whether you, under your watch, a genocide will take place, and you will look the other way because American interests were being upheld is a fair question because the American people want to know that anytime we engage a country, that we think about <clears throat> what our actions could be and how we believe our values are being farthered. That is my question. Will you make sure that human rights are not violated and that we uphold international and human rights? I suppose there is a question in there, and the answer is that the entire thrust of American policy in Venezuela <clears throat> is to support tell. the Venezuelan There's your tell. There's your tell. Is <clears throat> here it comes. Ah, mm. Here comes some lying shit. Effort to restore democracy to restore their country. democracy. That's our policy. These guys, this is the restorer of democracy. Mr. Death Squads. <laughs> Mr. Massacre two-year-old kids. This is that's who this guy is. Anytime there's a government that actually represents the people, he'll go down there, hire some goons, kill a bunch of people, massacre them, and then he'll get pardoned. That's who Elliot Abrams is. That guy should be in a pit right next to Hitler. That's who Elliot Abrams is. But right now, because we don't prosecute war criminals in the United States, he's back in government. He's back running policy for us in Venezuela. Are you happy? Wow, Trump really drained the swamp. So all the people who watch this show who voted for Trump because he was going to drain the swamp. Yeah, he drained it and he found a piece of shit like this guy there. And John Bolton. Jesus, fuck. Trump is now with the scummiest of the scum. So uh, at, at some point you will admit to yourself that you got duped by Trump because he's a fucking bullshitter. And this guy's horrible. Let's go. There's more to this. I don't think anybody disputes that. The question I had for you is that the interest, does the interest of the United States include protecting human rights and include protecting people against genocide? That is always the position of the United States. <laughs> Thank you. I yield back my time. Like, why was there should be like, no one's laughing. <laughs> like the whole place should just laugh. What the fuck's wrong with those people in there? I, I just like how he was tone policing her because I, I actually think she was beyond diplomatic. Oh, my in the God. Way she framed that question. I would have told him to shut up. If I had to frame that question, my question would have been, will you? For once in your life, because there is a first time for everything, not be a warmongering piece of garbage. That would be the way I would ask that question. I wouldn't be able to be as diplomatic as she was. So do you want to hear how so do you want to hear how people on the left responded to that? You know, the Center for American Progress, Nira Tandon, Hillary Clinton, John Podesta, the Center for American Progress. Do you want to know how they responded to that? Here's how they responded. Center for American Progress Vice President Kelly Magzaman, a Bush and Obama appointee whose last job prior to joining the Center for American Progress was as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense in the Obama administration. She posted and then deleted a tweet calling Abrams a fierce advocate for human rights and democracy only nodding towards Abrams' crimes as a serious professional mistake. She replaced it with one that's arguably just as bad. Center for American Progress was defending that guy. That's who near... So if you ever see Nera Tandon or see her on a talk show or hear... That's who the... Center, that's John Podesta. That's J Nera Tandon. That's Hillary Clinton. That's who the Center for American Progress is. Defending that guy... Instead of doing what Ilhan Omar did. That's who they are. 
For for the foreign policy blob that permeates Washington, D.C., minor offenses like the enablement of and active involvement in war crimes are just not considered valid reasons to remove people like Elliot Abrams from polite society. These are the que- that's the same question I ask about almost every day. How is this guy allowed well, still a Nicole Wallace? She was the spokesperson for a war criminal organization. Not only is she invited on MSNBC, they give her her own show. Shouldn't be she be apologizing till the day she dies and begging to be allowed back into polite society? Steve Schmidt brought you Sarah Palin. That guy also invited with open arms on MSNBC. All these cretins, there's never a, they're never banned from polite society. This guy either. George Bush is a war criminal. He goes and dances with Ellen. None of these guys are banned from John Bolton back in the government. These people on both sides of the aisle, right wingers and those slightly left of that, genuinely believe that it's impolitic to bring up the past. Call it delusion, call it DC brain, call it whatever you want. It's actively making things worse. This whole episode is an exercise in what America in what happens when the most powerful people in America are shielded from the consequences of their actions. The failure to prosecute anyone in the Bush administration for the Iraq war has produced a society where an alarming amount of people believe that George W. Bush was a good president. Though that is not, that is also no doubt driven by the fact that our current Republican president is such a clueless shitbag. The failure to really hold people accountable for Iran-Contra, the worst scandal in American history, has produced a society where Abrams is right back in power and Oliver North is running the NRA. I would say the Iraq war is a worst scandal. That's what I thought. I would say that. But, you know, we could quibble. They're all horrible. I want to also give a tip of the hat to uh, Representative Joaquin Castro. Uh, This Sam Sachs reported him. I don't have the video of it, but he was questioning that same piece of a war criminal, Elliot Abrams. And he said the role of the United States is not to handpick the next leader of Venezuela. Democratic Representative Joaquin Castro says Castro presses Abrams on weapons transfers to opposition groups in Venezuela and Abram denies it. So that's been reported. That's happened already. The United States, they found uh, United States weapons going to. So there we go. We're going to overthrow a democratically elected government again. I think this question, I asked this question because you have a history of such actions. This is what Juan Castro said to him. I asked this question because you have a history of doing this. This is all. Uh, Castro brings up Abrams' past lies to Congress during the Iran-Contra scandal. Can we trust your testimony today? You could make that decision for yourself, Abram responds. (laughs) Wow. Well, if genocide is considered a professional mistake, what's a war crime? Right? Then? You know, I, I mean, genocide. Like, maybe that's why nobody and faces he, consequences. And his defense always, a- Elliot Abrams, you heard him say it to her. His defense always is that we're bringing democracy, so we can do anything we want. We can commit genocides. We can uh, we can uh, fund guerrillas that uh, violently overthrow democratically elected governments. We can we can murder people at will. We can do whatever, whatever horrible because he believes he's. You know who else believed he was right? Hitler, Pol Pot. They all think they're right. Stalin. They all think what they're doing is the right thing to do. Hitler thought he was making the world better, getting rid of the bad people. That's what Elliot Abrams thinks. Uh, I love this. Let's not forget the time Elliot Abrams chortled with disbelief at the very notion that he or other U.S. officials might be held to account for their crimes in Central America. You want to see that? I think you have to be you have to apply uniform standards. President Bush one took, once talked about putting Saddam Hussein on trial for crimes against humanity, Nuremberg style tribunal. I think that's a good idea. But if you're serious, you have to be even handed. If we look at a case like this, I think we have to talk, start talking about putting Guatemalan and U.S. officials on trial. I think someone like Mr. Abrams would be a fit uh, a subject for such a Nuremberg-style <laughs> inquiry. But I- and he laughs. There he, there he is getting called out on a news show. 
That guy's got it right. He would be perfect for a Nuremberg-style trial. That's what he just said. And look at him. It'll never happen. I've been pardoned. And it's never it's not happening. Presidents pardon us when we commit war crimes. He's laughing. Like Judge Arpaio. That's who this guy is. Worse, worse than that. He's worse than Judge Arpaio, this guy. Yeah, you know, Jimmy, I just want to say, since this is the first time I'm seeing this video, I would say that his response is so revealing, like you're of highlighting. Course. Like, who in this room would giggle if somebody accused said, you should war be crime. accused of a war crime? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, Look no at this. Way. Watch. Agree with right. Mr. Abrams that Democrats right. would have to be in the dock with him. The right. Congress has been right. in on this. The Congress approved the sale of 16,000 M16s to Guatemala in 87 and right. 88. Hold on one second. I just avoid because they, they voted more they, military they, aid than the Republicans asked for. As, again, I invite you and Elliot Abrams back to discuss what he oh, did. But right thanks, now, Charlie. But you, I, 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 I want to. So Char Charlie's not going to make Charlie him. Rose is running interference for yes. the on behalf of the war criminal. That's exactly right. Wow. But he's, he's going to let him talk anyway. Watch. Uh, go ahead. You want to repeat the I question just, of you I want mean, to be in the dock? It is ludicrous. It is ludicrous to respond to that kind of stupidity. This guy thinks we were on the wrong side in the Cold War. Maybe he personally. Won so that's his defense because we were fighting the Cold War. You want to put people in jail who are fighting the cult? So that's the only defense he has. Yes, I want to put people who commit war crimes in jail, no matter when they did it, no matter for what reason. I want to put people who commit war crimes in jail, yes. So that's his defense. On the wrong side. Uh, I am one of the many millions of Americans. Right. Mr. Abrams, I don't we're on the wrong side in supporting the massacre of, of no. peasants and organizers. What I want to do is, to I want to ask the following Absolutely. question. And that's a crime. That's a crime, Mr. Abrams, for which people should be tried. You I have to yes. right. right. We'll put all the American officials who won the Cold War I'm uh, in you. the dock. All right. Uh, you have read. I Why do hosts in the corporate media always cut off the people that are reciting facts right do you ever notice that and, and i'm not even singling out this one because it happens all the I time know. but in this particular year like he's just like oh he wants to attack people and like just utters this uh sentiment that doesn't mean anything meanwhile this guy is giving a bunch of statistics and facts and history to back up his claims and he gets cut off okay. constantly well i think also charlie rose is probably also worried that other facts might come out about him so charlie are you, you, what i what i think is also hilarious here you don't think it would be good television to have one of your invited guests confront another guy who's a war criminal about his war crimes? You don't think that would be compelling television? He's like, let's not do this. Let's talk about something more boring. That That's what's hilarious there. Oh, my God. You don't think that would be... Com I, it's so compelling. I'm playing it 10 years fucking later. And you stopped it. That's why Charlie Rose... That's another reason why Charlie Rose should have been fired. So there you go. We're announcing our live dates for 2019. We're going to Chicago and Portland, Seattle, New York, all over the country. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all our tickets to all our shows. It'll be right underneath there, too. Please become a patron if you like our content and help support the show. You can become a patron for $5 a month, and we give you hours of bonus material. And make sure you're subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I'm not kidding. Make sure you're subscribed and click that bell so they give you a notice when we drop a video. It's the only thing we can do to fight back against the bastards. Thanks for your support.